Hello children, my greetings to you all. So from today we are just going to deal with the explanation of the poem An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum. So first of all, before starting the explanation of the stanzas, I would like to provide you with a little bit of introduction to this poem. So this particular poem has been written by Stephen Spender and it describes the social inequalities which prevail in the society. So first of all children, you will have to know that this particular poem is going to deal with the in, in, uh, is going to deal with the inequalities or discriminations that are prevailing in the society. So inequalities refer to the class inequalities, like the discrimination or difference between the rich class and the poor class. So in the poem, he describes the condition of students of an elementary school which is situated in a slum area. So here, the subject of the poem are the children who have been receiving education in an elementary school that is situated in a slum area. Elementary school means a primary school. So these children who have been studying in this in this elementary school that is situated in a slum have been deprived of the facilities that the normal children are supposed to be getting. So that is the plight that you will see here in the poem. The poet wants to draw the attention of everyone towards these kids so that their life and plight can be improved. So that is uh, what you have been told here that through this poem, the poet has been making an appeal to the people of the world, the poet has been making an appeal to the administrators of the world, the, uh, the poet has been making an appeal to all and sundry that something has to be done to improve the lot of these children, to improve the, uh, to improve the plight of these children, so that they might also be trained to become good citizens rather than criminals and bayworlds. So that is all about the introduction. कि यहाँ पे poet इस बारे में बात करता है कि जो समाज में class inequalities जो समाज में असमानताएं पाई जाती हैं उन असमानता उन असमानताओं को कैसे दूर किया जाए और इस poem में वो describe करता है elementary school के बच्चों को elementary school मतलब primary school के बच्चों को और कैसा primary school जो कि एक slum में स्थित है तो उनकी condition को describe करते हुए poet ये दिखाना चाहता है कि समाज के लोग जो हैं वो जागें और ये देखें कि एक वंचित जीवन कैसा होता है पोइट हमसे ये भी चाहता है ही वॉन्ट्स टू ड्रॉ दी अटेंशन ऑफ एवरी वन टूअर्ड्स दी स्किट्स सो दैट देयर लाइफ एंड प्लाइट कैन बी इम्प्रूव वो हमसे ये भी चाहता है कि हम जागें और ये देखें कि इनकी क्या दशा है और ताकि हम इनके लिए कुछ कर सकें ताकि समाज में इनकी प्लाइट इनकी कंडीशन इनकी बुरी दशा जो है उसमें कुछ सुधार आए और वो भी एक अच्छी ट्रेनिंग लेकर के देश के एक अच्छे नागरिक बन सके ना कि क्रिमिनल और आवारा बन जाए तो ये इस पोएम का इंट्रोडक्शन है सो चिल्ड्रन एज यू कैन सी हियर इन द टाइटल इट सेल्फ द नेम ऑफ द पोएम इज एन एलिमेंट्री स्कूल क्लासरूम इन अ स्लम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई लाइक टू गिव यू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ एक्सप्लेनेशन अबाउट द टाइटल ऑफ द पोएम एन एलिमेंट्री स्कूल क्लासरूम एलिमेंट्री स्कूल मीन्स ऑलरेडी आई हैव टोल्ड यू अ प्राइमरी स्कूल एलिमेंट्री स्कूल मीन्स primary school classroom that is situated in a slum slum means a poor uh, a poor locality so here in this particular poem you are going to be made the depiction of the condition of the slum children who are studying in an elementary school who are studying in a primary school that is situated in a slum to slum aap jante hain bachcho jhuggi jhopdi wagaira garibon ki localities hoti hain to is poem mein aap chitran dekhenge is poem mein aap representation dekhenge ek aise hi primary school ka ek aise hi elementary school ka jo ki ek slum mein स्थित है जो कि एक स्लम में सिचुएटेड है तो नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू डील विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द पोइट आल्सो हाउ एवर दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी आज इन सी बी एस सी एग्जामिनेशन येट फॉर द सेक ऑफ योर इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड फॉर द सेक ऑफ द प्रॉपर बिगिनिंग ऑफ द पोएम आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द पोएट ऑल्सो सो द पोइट ऑफ दिस पोएम इज स्टीफन स्पेंडर ही वॉज बॉर्न इन नाइनटीन एंड ही डाइड इन नाइनटीन So he was an English poet and essayist. So he was a poet as well as an essayist. He had also been writing essays. He left University College Oxford without taking a degree and went to Berlin in 1930. So earlier he had been an alumnus of University College Oxford, but then he went to Berlin in 1930. His friend took a keen interest in politics and declared himself to be a socialist and pacifist. 
So taking interest in politics, he declared himself to be a socialist and pacifist. Socialist means the person who is working for the society and pacifist means the person who has got pacified opinion, the person who has been working for, estab uh, for the establishment of peace in society. So in this way he was working as a pacifist. Udar Vadi unka drishtikor tha, Shanti Vadi drishtikor tha, ye pacifist ka matlab hota hai. So books by Spender include Poem of Dedication. So these are the works of Stephen Spender, Poem of Dedication, The Age of Being, The Creative Element, The Struggle of the Modern, and an autobiography world within world so these are the famous works of stephen spender and then an uh, elementary school classroom in a slum he has concentrated on the themes of social justice and class inequality so in this particular poem that has been presented here in your syllabus you will see that he has been concentrating mainly on the theme of social injustice he has been talking about the theme of social injustice he has been talking about the injustice that is prevailing in society on account of the difference of classes and he has also been talking about the class inequalities the discrimination that is being made among people on the basis of their caste with community religion and richness and poverty so that is called class inequality so these are the areas that he has concentrated on this poem mein unhone kya baat ki hai unhone un logon ke bare mein baat ki hai jo social injustice ka shikar hain aur jinhe class inequality is samajik asmantaon ka samna karna hota hai to khas karke inme un bachcho ke through is baat ko aage badhai badhaya gaya hai ki jo slum localities mein rehte hain aur jo garibon ke elementary school mein garibon ke primary school mein padhte hain to ye baat aapko yahan pe batayi gayi aapko ye samajh mein aa gayi hogi bachcho So children, now we are going to start with the line by line explanation of the poem An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum So the meaning of the title I have already explained to you and now we are going to deal with the introductory questions that have been asked here in the beginning of the poem So have you ever visited or seen an elementary school in a slum? So what the poet says to you This is a very important question that the poet has been asking you here If you have ever visited any school that is situated in a slum so exactly you might not have visited any such school you might not have visited any school as such that is situated in a slum but if you ever try to visit a primary school that is set up by municipality a municipality run primary school you would be able to experience to some extent the situation that is going to prevail in an elementary school that is situated in a slum if you visit a municipality run primary school to some extent you would be able to find that uh, the children have been deprived of the facilities, the children have been deprived of the facilities. However, the nowadays the government has really been trying to do a lot in order to Im improve upon the condition of these people, yet a lot is required to be done. So, Bachchu, first of all, you have a question here, that if you have ever been in any elementary school in the slum, then you can see that you don't have any such school exactly. लेकिन अगर आप इस तरीके के अपने मोहल्ले में खुले हुए इस तरीके के गरीबों के स्कूल को विजिट करेंगे तो आपको वो सिचुएशन समझ में आ जाएगी व्हाट डज इट लुक लाइक सो डेफिनेटली इट लुक्स लाइक टू इट लुक्स लाइक टू हैव बीन डिप्राइव्ड ऑफ द नॉर्मल फैसिलिटीज व्हिच आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी देयर सो हियर एट द सेम टाइम आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू टेल यू that the poet has been making a description of the children who have been studying in an elementary school that has been set up in a slum area. And the poet says that the faces of these children are dull and they appear to be without any energy. And that is what has been referred to here in the very first line. Far far from gusty waves these children's faces. Means these children's faces do not receive a gusty wave. That means here the uh, expression gusty wave refers to a good atmosphere that these children do not get the exposure to a good atmosphere and thereby they appear to be dull they appear to be without any energy so poet kya keh raha hai ki in bachchon ke chehre jo hain wo gusty waves se bahut dur hain gusty waves ka matlab ki ek acche atmosphere se ek khuli hawa se bahut dur hain like rootless weeds the hair torn round their pallor so pallor means faded face so their hair is scattered upon their face like rootless weed so that is what the poet wants to say here if you just go to the allegorical meaning of the line, you may also just uh, refer to the fact that these children are like the rootless weeds that have been grown upon their fields. 
तो वीड्स क्या होती हैं कि जिनको हम उखाड़ करके फेंक देते हैं जो हमारे किसी काम की नहीं होती हैं तो उन वीड्स से पोएट इन बच्चों को कंपेयर कर रहा है वो क्या कह रहा है कि दिस चिल्ड्रेन आर कम्पेयर टू अनवॉन्टेड वीड and the writer wants to say that these children seem to be unwanted like the unwanted weeds which grow in the fields but if you just uh, stick to the literal meaning if you stick to the verbal meaning of the line you are just going to assume it to have been used for the hair that their hair is torn uh, uh, is torn upon their face upon their pallor pallor means faded face that their hair is torn upon their faded face like rootless weeds ki jaise जो रूटलेस वीड होती है जिस तरीके से ज़मीन से उखड़ी हुई जो घास बिखरी हुई रहती है उसी तरीके से इनके बाल जो हैं वो भी इनके चेहरे के ऊपर बिखरे हुए हैं दैट मीन्स दैट देयर हेयर इज़ नॉट नीटली डन इट हैज़ बीन फॉलोइंग अपॉन देयर फेस एंड दैट मीन्स दैट दीज चिल्ड्रेन आर अन टाइडी दे हैव नॉट कॉम देयर हेयर एंड दे आर टोटली इन एन इम प्रॉपर स्टेट ऑफ लाइफ and further the poet has been making a description of the class however he would not be able to make a description of the whole class and that is why he has been making a reference of the representative cases only ki poet ab sabke bare mein to baat nahi kar sakta hai to class ke jo kuch representative children hain jo representative students hain ki jaise aapke class mein agar koi inspection pe aaye to wo class ke har ek bacche se baat nahi karega lekin agar wo kuch bachchon se baat karta hai kuch representative bachchon ko unke samne लाया जाता है तो उन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव बच्चों से कुछ क्वेश्चंस पूछ करके उनसे बातचीत करके वो इस बात को गेस कर लेगा कि पूरी क्लास कैसी होगी तो इन द सेम वे हेयर आल्सो यू हैव बीन टोल्ड ऑफ सम रिप्रेजेंटेटिव केसेस ऑफ द क्लास सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द पोइट हैज बीन मेकिंग अ डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अ यंग गर्ल द टॉल गर्ल विद हर वेट डाउन हेड सो दिस टॉल गर्ल हैज बिन सिटिंग देयर इन द क्लास विद हर हेड वेट डाउन विद हर हेड वेट डाउन so this girl has been sitting here in the class with her head weighed down so this weighed down head is a representation of dejection this has been referring to her depression ki ye jo tall girl hai usne apne sar ko latka rakha hai weighed down head ka matlab ki ye uske dejection uske sorrow ko represent karta hai that she is not happy that she is not satisfied she is not happy on account of the conditions that have been prevailing in her life that is what you have been told here so it is also giving a reference to the fact that uh, probably she has been burdened by poverty her head is bent and that there is another child the paper seeming boy with red size in the class there is also a paper seeming boy there is a very lean and thin boy who has got red size so red size means eyes making a reflection of hunger तो पोइट ने अभी तक आपको दो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव केसेस के बारे में बताया कि एक टॉल गर्ल है जिसने अपना सर लटका रखा है उसने अपनी हेड को बेंड कर रखा है वेट डाउन कर रखा है जिससे उसके डिप्रेशन जिससे उसके डिजेक्शन का पता चलता है और ये पता चलता है कि वो कहीं ना कहीं अनहैप्पी है और शायद पॉवर्टी उसकी ज़िंदगी पर हावी है द पेपर सीमिंग बॉय वहीं पर एक पेपर सीमिंग बॉय है देर इज़ अ वेरी लीन एंड लीन एंड थिन बॉय एंड ही हैज़ हंगर लर्किंग फ्रॉम हिज आइज the stunted unlucky hair of twisted bones reciting a father's nail disease his lesson from his desk so can you pay attention children what the poet tells you here the stunted that this boy is stunted stunted means underdeveloped that this child is underdeveloped the stunted unlucky hair so he is an unlucky heir heir means successor like you are the successor of the property of your parents so is this child he is also an unlucky heir he is also an unlucky successor because he is going to succeed diseases from his parents so can you pay attention somebody is going to be a lucky successor somebody is going to be a lucky heir heir means successor like you are the heir to your parents property so you are going to be a lucky heir because you are going to succeed riches you are going to succeed bank balances you are going to succeed uh, houses you are going to succeed wealth but these children are not going to succeed anything as such rather they are going to succeed what they are going to succeed diseases they are the successor of twisted bones they are going to receive diseases twisted bones means rickets and these kind of things polio and these kind of things reciting a father's nail disease his lesson from his desk so whenever he has been asked to recite a lesson whenever he has been asked to narrate a lesson he has been reciting his father's nail disease he has been reciting his father's naughty k n o w t y naughty gaanth wali wo apne father ki gaanth wali diseases ko ek lesson ki tarike se apne desk se sunata hai ki when he is attending the class and when the teacher has been interrogating him he is not able to give any proper reply rather he has been lamenting over the sorrows of the family ki jab usse ek lesson suna jata hai to wo apne father ki nail disease nail matlab gaanthon wali jo naughty k n o w t y 
गांठों वाली जो डिजीज़ है उसके बारे में वो बताता है कि देखो हम तो क्लास नहीं अटेंड कर पाए क्योंकि मेरे पापा हॉस्पिटल में थे तो दैट इज़ हाउ हीज बिन नैरेटिंग हिज मेजरी और ये बच्चा कैसा है ये स्टंटेड है स्टंटेड मीन्स अंडर डेवलप सो जस्ट ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ मेल न्यूट्रिशन ही हैज़ ऑल्सो नॉट बीन एबल टू ग्रो सफिशियंटली और वो अनलकी एयर है वो अनलकी उत्तराधिकारी है क्योंकि उसे कोई बैंक बैलेंस और कोई इस तरीके की चीज़ें नहीं मिलती हैं बल्कि उसे अपने माँ बाप से मुसीबतें मिलती हैं आई स्टिल रिम्बर ए पोएम दैट आई हैड स्टडीड इन माई टेंथ क्लास दैट वॉज फ्रॉम हिंदी तो वॉट हैड बिन सेड इन दैट पोएम कि जब बाप मरा तब ये पाया बूढ़े किसान के बेटे ने कि कोई बूढ़े किसान की दशा को यहाँ पे चित्रित किया गया है कि जब बाप मरा तब ये पाया बूढ़े किसान के बेटे ने घर का मलबा टूटी खटिया कुछ हाथ भूमि वो भी पड़ती बस यही नहीं जो भूख मिली सौ गुनी बाप से अधिक मिली वो पेट खलाए फिरता है चौड़ा मुँह बाए फिरता है वो क्या जाने आज़ादी क्या आज़ाद देश की बातें क्या वॉट यू हैव बिन टोल्ड हेयर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पोएम डेट आई टोल्ड यू इन हिंदी इस कि जब बाप मरा तब ये पाया बूढ़े किसान के बेटे ने जब देर इज़ अ फार्मर सन एंड दिस इज़ वॉट ही इज़ गोइंग टू इनहेरिट घर का मलबा अ हाउस एंड रबिश टूटी खटिया ब्रोकन कॉट कुछ हाथ भूमि वो भी पड़ती अ लिटिल पैच ऑफ लैंड एंड डेट टू अनफल्टाइल बस यही नहीं जो भूख मिली डेट ही हैज़ गॉट अ हंगर हंड्रेड टाइम्स ग्रेटर दैन इज फादर His father need not have a mobile phone. His father need not have a bike. His father need not have anything as such. But he requires these things. That his hunger is hundred times greater than that of his father. कि बस यही नहीं जो भूख मिली सौ गुनी बाप से अधिक मिली वो पेट खलाए फिरता है दैट ही शोज इज हंगर चौड़ा मुँह बाए फिरता है वो क्या जाने आज़ादी क्या आज़ाद देश की बातें क्या दैट ही डज नॉट नो वट फ्रीडम मीन्स दैट ही वुड नॉट बी एबल टू अप्रिशिएट डेमोक्रेसी सो दैट इज द सेम सिचुएशन दैट हैज़ बीन रेफर्ड टू हेयर that such a child who is stunted who is under developed he would not be able to appreciate freedom or anything any political success of india so at the back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young so further the poet tells you that at the back of the dim class so dim class is a representation of poor infrastructure facilities so at the back of the dim class there is one unnoted sweet and young child there is one unnoted child who is very sweet and young so why is he unnoted he is partially unnoted on account of his own carelessness that he himself does not come up to the teachers and partially he is unnoted on account of the indifference of the teachers ki kuch teachers ki udasinta ki wajah se aur kuch apni udasinta ki wajah se wo unnoted reh jata hai uske upar koi dhyan nahi deta hai though he is very sweet and young wo bahut pyara sa bachcha hai his eyes live in a dream of a squirrel's game so he just dreams of a squirrel's game he cannot afford to have the expensive automated games he cannot afford to have the mobile games and these kind of things he would not be able to afford for the video games and uh, play stations and uh, these kind of gaming consoles and that is why he has been dreaming of the, dreaming of the simple pleasures of life like the squirrel's game that a squirrel plays in the hollow of a tree ki ye bachcha jo hai ye bhi kabhi अपने एंटरटेनमेंट के लिए सोचता है बट ही इज़ नॉट एबल टू अफोर्ड दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ द मिजरी ऑफ द फैमिली बिकॉज ही हैज़ ऑल्सो टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द फैमिली इनकम एंड दैट इज़ वाई ही कैन नॉट गो टू एन्जॉय हिमसेल्फ विद गेम्स ही वुड हैव टू गो फॉर अर्निंग सो दैट इज वट आई हैव टोल्ड यू हेव सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू द केस ऑफ दीज पीपल हुव बीन अटेंडिंग द क्लास दैट इज हाउ यू हैव बीन गिवन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दीज पीपल दैट देर इज अ टॉल गर्ल हु सीम्स टू बी बर्डन बाई पॉवर्टी हर हेड इज bent and there is a mark of tiredness on her face then there is another boy who is very weak i'm just summarizing the things he is very weak and uh, there is hunger lurking from his eyes and he is just looking as thin as a sheet of paper and further there is a description of another student who has received diseases from his parents and instead of getting the facilities he is just going to get the miseries from his forefathers and further there is yet another boy who is very sweet and young and yet he has not been receiving the attention of his teachers so in this way the first stanza has been finished and now we will be uh, dealing with the second stanza so children now we are going to start here with the second stanza on the sour cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities build flowery tyrolis valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world 
where all their future is painted with a fog and narrow street sealed in with a lead sky far far from rivers capes and stars of worlds so children i would like to provide you with the line by line explanation of this stanza what you have been told here on the sour cream walls donations so children what you have been told here that these children have also done a lot in order to beautify their classrooms they have made certain donations to beautify the walls of their classrooms they have made certain contributions to beautify the walls of their classrooms and those contributions have been referred to here as donations otherwise the walls of the classroom are sour cream the walls of the classroom are dirty cream they have been faded away and they have not recently been painted and polished that is what this first line means on the sour cream walls donations that the walls of the classroom are sour cream the walls of the classroom are dirty cream in color because they have not been painted and polished and they have been decorated with certain donations so what these donations are shakespeare's head there is a portrait of shakespeare beautifying the wall of the classroom then there is a landscape there is a scenery hanging on the wall of the classroom that has been showing a cloudless sky at dawn that has been showing a morning sky that is cloudless so that kind of a scenery is also hanging over there on the wall of the classroom a scenery a landscape of a cloudless sky at dawn then the third thing that has been used for the purpose of decoration are the civilized dome riding wall cities civilized dome riding wall cities so this is a reference to the minarets of the churches mosques and temples so there is also the picture of the holy places like churches mosques and temples and their minarets rising high up in the sky so these buildings have been referred to as civilized dome they have been referred to as civilized dome because they teach us of civilization and they are riding wall cities they are higher than the rest of the buildings that are there in the city so that is the third picture of the temples and churches and mosques that has been hanging there on the wall of the classroom then there is another picture of the tyrolese valley there is another picture of tyrolese valley so this is the name of a valley tyrolese valley and uh, it is built in flowery it is flowery there are flowers blooming onto the branches of the trees and it is built built means this is the imagination of the poet that on the branches of the trees and plants small bells have been tied and they just produce a jingling sound as the wind blows so that is how it is built and flowery tyrolese valley there is also a picture of tyrolese valley that is built and flowery that has got the flowers blooming up and that is producing a jingling sound as the small bells have been tied to the branches of the trees then in the classroom there is also an open handed map open handed map means a hand drawn map awarding the world its world that this is the map that has been awarding the picture of the actual world to the world of the children awarding the world its world means there are two worlds one is the actual world and another is the world of the children who are sitting over there in the classroom so this open handed map this is uh, this hand drawn map has been awarding the children the picture of the actual world because if we come to know that china is to the north of india or sri lanka is to the south of india so we have not gone to the space and we have not checked it out whether sri lanka is to the south of india or not we just get the reference of these kind of things only from the map so it is the map that is hanging there in the classroom that has been awarding the world of the children the picture of the actual world that is the meaning of this line and yet for these children but unfortunately for these children these windows not this map their world that for these children for these children their windows are their map that there is that their world kindly pay attention children these windows their map that means that for these children these windows have become the symbol of map as whatever they can see through their window whatever whatever they can see from their window their world is limited to that particular point if they can see to a stretch of a kilometer their world is limited to that stretch only so for these children unfortunately not this map has become the representation of the world but for these children their windows have become the representation of the world ki wo apni khidki se jitna dekhte hain bas utne mein hi unki duniya simit hai that is what the poet wants to tell you here where all their future is painted with a fog that in their life there is only fog there is only dullness there is only a kind of unclarity prevailing around
where all their future is painted with a fog that if you want to go somewhere and if the weather is foggy you would not be able to see to a distance and that is how the circumstances are there in the life of these children that for them also everything is painted with a fog that their vision is not clear a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky far far from rivers capes and stars of worlds so here the poet is telling you that if they want to run a race towards their future they are going to get a they are going to get only a narrow street to run their race ki agar ye apne bhavishya ki taraf daudna chahe to inko keval ek patli gali milegi daudne ke liye and that too is blocked with a lead sky that too is blocked with a bright sun so suppose you want to run so what would you prefer would you like to prefer to run when it is very sunny or would you like to prefer to run when it is cloudy so definitely you would like to run when it is cloudy because if it is sunny you are going to be exhausted early and if you want to run a race definitely you would like to run a race on a stressed track not in a narrow street because if you are running in a na- narrow street there is going to be a hustle and bustle and you may fall down to ye ye jo race hai ye race ek uh, allegorical race hai jo poet yahan pe kya keh raha hai ki agar ye apne bhavishya ki taraf daudna bhi chahe to inko ek patli gali hi milti hai daudne ke liye ki jisme ye dhakka mukki kha kar ke gir jate hain aur inke upar ek tamtamata hua suraj hai jo bahut jaldi inko exhaust kar deta hai bahut jaldi inko thaka deta hai far far from rivers that their lives are far away from rivers capes and stars of worlds capes means a kind of shelter and a star of worlds means they have not got even the verbal support in their life and their lives are far away from rivers to ek bar fir se samjhiye isko ki yahan pe poet kya kehta hai ki inki inke jo classroom hai wo infrastructural facilities mein lack karte hain unki walls sour cream hai means dirty cream hai ki matlab wo gandi hai kafi time se painted nahi hai par fir bhi in bachchon ne unko sajane ke liye kuch contributions kuch donations deewal pe lagaye hain jaise aap classroom decoration competition ke time pe karte hain ya aur occasions pe karte hain और इन डोनेशंस में इन डेकोरेशंस में क्या चीज़ें हैं शेक्सपियर का हेड मतलब शेक्सपियर की एक पोर्ट्रेट है एक क्लाउडलेस स्काई का एक लैंडस्केप लगा हुआ है एक सीनरी लगी हुई है उसके अलावा मंदिर मस्जिदों के पोस्टर्स लगे हुए हैं जिनकी मिनारेट्स काफ़ी ऊपर तक आसमान में जा रही हैं फिर उसके अलावा वहाँ पर एक टायरोलीज वैली जो है कि एक वैली है उसकी पिक्चर लगी हुई है जो फ्लावरी है और जिसमें छोटी छोटी घंटियाँ बंधी हुई हैं डालियों से कि जो हवा चलने पर जिंगलिंग साउंड प्रोड्यूस करती हैं यह आपको बताया गया फिर साथ ही साथ वहाँ पर एक ओपन हैंडेड मैप एक हैंड ड्रॉन मैप है और इसी मैप के द्वारा इन बच्चों को अपनी दुनिया की जानकारी मिलती है तो हर मैप के द्वारा ही हमें जानकारी मिलती है अगर हमें यह पता चलता है कि पाकिस्तान हमारे वेस्ट में है तो मैप के ही थ्रू हम जान पाते हैं हमने जा करके चेक नहीं किया है ऊपर आसमान में से तो इट इज़ द मैप डेट हैज़ बिन गिविंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट दीज थिंग्स पर दुर्भाग्यवश इन बच्चों के लिए इनकी खिड़कियां ही इनका मैप है मतलब कि अपनी खिड़की से जितना देख सकते हैं उतने में ही इनकी दुनिया है इनके लिए अमेरिका इंग्लैंड रूस कहाँ है उससे कोई फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता इनकी खिड़की से जितना दिखता है उतनी ही इनकी दुनिया है और इस दुनिया में उनका फ्यूचर जो है वो फॉगी है ब्लर्ड है उनका विजन ब्लर्ड है वो ये नहीं जानते हैं कि वो क्या बनेंगे और अगर वो अपने फ्यूचर की तरफ दौड़ना भी चाहें जैसा कि मैंने आपको बताया तो इनको केवल एक लेड स्काई मिलती है नैरो स्ट्रीट में दौड़ने के लिए कि तमतमाता हुआ सूरज मिलता है और पतली सकरी जगह मिलती है दौड़ने के लिए कि ये उसी में लड़ भिड़ करके और थक करके गिर जाते हैं इनकी ज़िंदगी में ना कोई रिवर है रिवर दैट इज़ अ सिम्बल ऑफ कम्फर्ट तो दैट इज़ ऑल्सो नॉट अवेलेबल इन देयर लाइफ केप्स देर इज़ नो शेल्टर इन देयर लाइफ स्टार्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड्स की शब्दों का भी कोई सपोर्ट इनकी ज़िंदगी में नहीं है ये बात आपसे बताई जा रही है सो आई होप यू हैव बीन एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग्स अप टू हियर सो डियर चिल्ड्रन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट हियर विद द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द नेक्स्ट स्टेंजा शेवली शेक्सपियर इज विकेट द मैप अ बैड एग्जांपल विद शिप्स एंड सन एंड लव टेंप्टिंग देम टू स्टील फॉर लाइफ्स दैट स्लाइडली टर्न इन देयर क्रैम्प्ड होल्स फ्रॉम फॉग टू एंडलेस नाइट सो व्हाट द पोएट टेल्स यू हियर earlier he had been talking about the pictures that have been pasted upon the walls of the classroom and these are such pictures which are beyond their power of com- comprehension comprehending these pictures is beyond their abilities they cannot understand the meaning of these pictures that they have pasted upon their classrooms and one of those pictures is the portrait of shakespeare so what you have been told here that shakespeare is wicked so why is shakespeare wicked shakespeare is generally not wicked for everybody shakespeare is a great man he has written the works which the world is proud of but in the context to these children shakespeare is wicked why because he has been making a mention of sun and love he has been making a mention of the scenes of love and when these children try to achieve this love when these children try to procure this love 
they are disheartened they are deceived and that is why in the context to these children even shakespeare is wicked they hate everyone and for them shakespeare is also not a good man as no one loves them they also dislike everybody and sometimes the desire for love and acceptance they have also got a desire for love and acceptance they want that they should be loved and they should be accepted but the world does not accept them so this kind of a disact this this kind of a disacceptance forces them to do crimes like stealing so what you have been told here that shakespeare is wicked so how is shakespeare wicked because shakespeare has been making a mention of love and sun sun means any good resource any source of energy but in their lives there isn't any source of energy there isn't anything supportive available in their life so when they hear of love in the works of shakespeare they try to achieve it they try to procure it and when they are not able to get it they consider shakespeare wicked the map is also a bad example for them because the map has been telling of various destinations of the world that they want to visit but on account of the lack of resources they can never do so so sometimes it has been creating a kind of protest in their heart it has been making them rebellion and they decide that they would also have to earn the riches of the world and when they cannot earn the riches in the right means they become criminals they become smugglers they become lawless and as long as they are able to perform their lawless activities they remain rich and when they are caught everything is going to be ended for them to aapko kya bataya gaya bachcho ki shakespeare unke liye wicked hai to shakespeare wicked ka matlab bura to shakespeare actually bura nahi hai lekin unke liye shakespeare bura hai kyunki shakespeare mention karta hai sun aur love ko sun ka matlab a source of energy ek tarike ka resource aur love और ये लव उनके पास अवेलेबल नहीं है तो वो भी चाहते हैं कि लोग उन्हें प्यार करें लोग उन्हें एक्सेप्ट करें पर जब लोग उन्हें रिजेक्ट करते हैं तो उनका दिल टूट जाता है और वो लॉलेस और क्रिमिनल्स बन जाते हैं मैप भी उनके लिए एक बैड एग्जांपल है क्योंकि मैप उनको दुनिया के डेस्टिनेशन के बारे में बताता है जहाँ वो पहुँचना तो चाहते हैं पर पहुँच नहीं सकते हैं और इस तरीके से अल्टीमेटली क्या होता है कि उनके मन में कभी कभी एक प्रोटेस्ट आ जाता है कभी कभी एक नफरत आ जाती है और वो ये सोचते हैं कि उन्हें भी इन चीज़ों को कैसे भी प्राप्त करना है तो इसके लिए वो लॉलेस हो जाते हैं कभी क्रिमिनल्स हो जाते हैं उन्होंने स्मगलिंग करनी शुरू कर दी वो टेररिस्ट हो गए और इस तरीके से जब तक वो चल रहे हैं चल रहे हैं और जिस दिन वो पकड़े गए उनके लिए सब कुछ खत्म हो जाता है तो देट इज़ वट यू हैव बीन टोल्ड है नेक्स्ट लाइन on their slag heap these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on a stone all of their time and space are foggy slum so blot their maps with slums as big as doom so what uh, is the poet telling you here on their slag heap slag heap means in their poor accommodation in their poor houses in their poor localities slag heap is referring to their poor accommodation it has been referring to their poor localities it has been referring to their poor houses so on their slag heaps these children wear skins peeped through by bones so these children they are the victims of malnutrition and that is why they are looking very lean and thin that their skeleton is visible through their through their skin that if they remove their shirt their skeleton is going to be visible through their skin so this is just a description of their poverty this is just a description of the malnutrition that they have suffered from they are sometimes wearing spectacles of steel with mended glass that they are wearing spectacles of steel of low quality their spectacles are of low quality they are poor sometimes broken spectacles of steel with mended glass so if the glass is mended if the glass is repaired in the spectacles it is just going to be good for nothing but they are wearing it for the sake of satisfying their taste so these glasses are broken like the bottle bits on stone ki jaise aap kisi sheeshe ki bottle ko utha kar ke patthar pe patak de to wo jaise uske sheeshe toot jayenge waise hi inke chashme ke bhi sheeshe toote hue hain lekin fir bhi unhone shauk pura karne ke liye unko laga rakha hai what the poet says all of their time and space of foggy slum that there is only fog around them that there is only a lack of vision around them as when the weather is foggy when the uh, when the weather is uh, unclear we are not able to see to a distance so is the case with these people also that their time and space of foggy slum they have been living in a kind of slum that is foggy 
that there isn't any vision available for future. So blot their maps with slums as big as doom. So this is a kind of taunt upon people by the poet. That if you cannot do anything in order to improve their lot, at least blot their maps with slums as big as doom. Just blot their maps. Just put some blots upon their maps and let them know that this blot is just referring to their position. This blot is these is referring to these people. So that is what the poet is telling you here. आपको क्या कहा जा रहा है कि on their slag heap कि अपने उजड़े से घरों में अपने पुराने से घरों में ये बच्चे रह रहे हैं और ये इतने दुबले पतले हैं कि इनकी स्किन के नीचे इनकी हड्डियां दिखाई देती हैं इन्होंने स्पेक्टिकल्स लगा रखे हैं शौक में और वो भी टूटे ग्लास वाले हैं इनकी जिंदगी में इनका टाइम और स्पेस जो है वो फॉगी है कि मतलब इन्हें किसी भी तरीके का विजन अवेलेबल नहीं है तो पोइट एक टॉन्टिंग टोन में कह रहा है एक टॉन्ट करने के नजरिए से कह रहा है कि अगर आप कुछ नहीं कर सकते हैं तो आप कम से कम इनके मैप्स के ऊपर बड़े बड़े धब्बे लगा दें और इनको ये बता दें कि ये तुम ये धब्बा हो इनको ये बता दें कि तुम ही हो ये धब्बे ये धब्बे कि जैसे कि तुम्हारी पोजीशन मैप में ये धब्बों की तरीके से है यू आर नो बेटर देन दीज ब्लॉट्स ऑन द मैप ऑफ योर कंट्री सो एटलीस्ट दे वुड नो वट दे आर दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू कंसिडर दम सेल्स एज द इक्वल सिटीजन ऑफ द कंट्री दे वुड नॉट कंसिडर दम सेल्स इक्वीवेलेंट जस्ट ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ हैविंग द प्रिवलेज ऑफ वोटिंग ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ इलेक्शन कि उनको ये समझ में आ जाएगा कि असलियत में वो सभी के बराबर नहीं है असलियत में वो सिर्फ धब्बे हैं ये उन्हें समझ में आ जाएगा कि केवल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली एक वोटिंग राइट right पा जाने से कोई समाज में बराबर नहीं हो जाता है तो ये कहना ये पोइट का एक टॉन्ट है अपॉन दी थिंकिंग अपॉन दी सेंस ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द रिच क्लास So now let us begin with the next stanza. Unless governor, inspector, visitor, this map becomes their window, and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town, and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands, and let their tongues run naked into books, the white and green leaves open, history theirs whose language is is the sun. So can you pay attention what the poet tells you here? So here in this stanza, the poet has been issuing a warning for the authorities of the world. The poet has been issuing a warning for the in charges of the world, for the brunt bearers of the world, for the caretakers and responsible people of the world. The poet has been issuing a warning here that unless the governor, inspector, and visitor, the governor, inspector, and visitor, these people means these are the brunt bearers of the society, if they do not take care of their condition. so what the poet says here unless the governor inspector and visitor this map becomes their window so the poet wants to say that the governor inspector and visitor means the brunt bearers of the society the responsible people of the society the authorities of the world have to take care that somehow this map should becomes uh, should become their window they have to do something so that this map becomes their window so what you have been told here previously that by the time they consider their window as their map whatever they can see through their window is their world to poet kya yahan pe keh raha hai poet keh raha hai ki jo samaj ke zimmedar log hain unki ye responsibility hai ki wo kuch aisa kare ki ye map inke liye window ban jaye abhi tak ye window inke liye map hai ki wo apni khidki se jitna dekhte hain bas utne mein hi unki duniya hai lekin hame kuch aisa karna hai so that this map becomes their window so that this map becomes their window of the world ki kisi bhi tarike se wo duniya ko is map ke थ्रू देखें ना कि अपनी विंडो के थ्रू कि हमें इनका नजरिया बढ़ाने की जरूरत है इनका दायरा बढ़ाने की जरूरत है कि ताकि इनका मैप इनके लिए विंडो बन जाए कि ये दुनिया को मैप के सहारे देखें ये जो मैप में जो दुनिया है वो इनकी दुनिया हो जाए ना कि केवल वही इनकी दुनिया रह जाए जितना ये अपनी खिड़की से देख सकते हैं and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs means these windows that have been enclosed upon their lives like catacombs catacombs means burial chambers that these windows that have shut upon them these windows that have been shut upon them like catacombs like burial chamber should be opened why because you have seen that the you uh, you have seen in the chapter lost spring also that the children who have been working in the dingy cells generally do not get the opportunity to go out and that is why their eyes are more adjusted to dark so that is the same thing that has been written here that these windows have been shut upon their lives like catacombs like burial chambers that these windows have been enclosed upon them like catacombs like burial chambers ki कब्र की तरीके से ये खिड़कियां इनके ऊपर बंद हो गई हैं और ये दिन भर काम में लगे रहते हैं अपने घरों से निकलने को ही नहीं पाते हैं तो इन खिड़कियों को तोड़ दो तोड़ दो इन खिड़कियों को शट 
these windows that have been shut upon their life they should be broken they should be broken down and opened otherwise one day they are just going to become rebellious and they are going to break the town ki ek din agar aisa nahi karoge inko inke adhikar nahi doge to ek din ye rebellious ho jayenge aur ye तुम्हारे घर संसार को उजाड़ देंगे जैसे आपने देखा फ्रेंच रेवोल्यूशन आपने देखा रशियन रेवोल्यूशन के जब लोगों को उनके अधिकार नहीं मिले तो लोग लोग रिवोल्ट करने लगे तो अगर इनकी कंडीशन को हमने नहीं समझा तो वन डे दे आर आल्सो गोइंग टू बिकम रेबेलियस एंड दे आर गोइंग टू ब्रेक द टाउन शो द चिल्ड्रेन टू ग्रीन फील्ड्स लेट देम कम आउट एंड बी एक्सपोज टू ग्रीन फील्ड्स मेक देयर वर्ल्ड रन एज्योर ऑन गोल्ड सैंड रन एज्योर मीन्स लेट देम रन टूवर्ड्स स्काई एज्योर मीन्स ब्लू स्काई लेट देम रन टूवर्ड्स द ब्लू स्काई उनको भी प्रगति करने दो आगे बढ़ने दो रन एज्योर ऑन गोल्ड सैंड गोल्ड सैंड मीन्स अ सॉलिड सपोर्ट दैट दे शुड ऑल्सो हैव गॉट अ सॉलिड सपोर्ट अंडर दियर अंडर दियर फीट कि उनके भी पैरों के नीचे एक जमीन हो और वो भी आकाश की तरफ उड़ सकें Let their tongues run naked into books that they should also be given the opportunity of getting education. They should also be able to turn the white and green pages of the book, because history theirs whose language is the sun. That only they are able to create history whose language is vigorous. Only they are able to create a history who have who have got a vigor in their language. कि history वही लिख पाते हैं इतिहास वही लिख पाते हैं कि जिनकी भाषा में एक जोश है कि जिनके अंदर जोश है वही history create कर पाते हैं. So that is what you have been told here, children. I hope you would have been able to understand this poem.